What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to look at the SCAR SKM 9005D, which came in second place in a recent poll on our Wilson Audio Labs YouTube channel. Make sure you say subscribe to our channel. You can see when we have these polls and you can vote on what app you want to see next. But yes, here is the mini SCAR. As you can see, the price at the time of this video is $159 for a five channel. And we purchased ours on Amazon. Check the video description below for a link. This amp is rated to deliver 55 by 4 at 4 ohms plus 300 by 1 to the sub channel or 85 by 4 plus 450 to the sub channel at 2 ohms, all at 14.4 volts. Let's get it out of the box. You can see a relatively small amplifier here. Let's take a look at the accessories that's included. Of course, you get the owner's manual. Make sure you read this well and understand it. Get the base knob with the remote. This does use the eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter connection, which we really don't like because these can pull out. In addition, it comes with a pigtail for the speaker outputs. And since the amp is so small, it has to do it, but we really don't like those type of connections. Let's take a look at the end plate and see what we have going on. On the input side of the amp, we can see RCA inputs for channels one through five. Also, the channels 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 controls, which include the gain, the variable crossover, and how you want the crossover set, and the sub controls are on the bottom, as well as a remote base connection. We did have to hook up all the different channels here, because the amp did not provide a way to do 2-channel or 4-channel inputs. You had to use all the inputs. On the opposite side, you can see the 8-gauge for power, ground, and remote, and the speaker output, which comes on this plug and harness, which is a little bit of a wiring mess here, kind of like a head unit. In order to make the wiring cleaner, I like to purchase these terminal blocks you can get off of Amazon. Check the link in the video description. I'll have a link where you can pick these up. As far as the dimensions go, 12.4 inches by 4.6 inches. You can also see the metric equivalent there, so about the size of a shoe. And the height wise is about a 1.7 inches or 43 millimeters. All right, here we have the five channel SCAR. 9005D tiny amplifier you can see we got it wired up here using one of these terminal strips check the video description below if you want to pick one of those up I get these off of Amazon and right now we've got the sub channel hooked up so we're going to try the sub channel see what kind of power we get to the sub channel we do have the front and rear channels bridged going into the big dummy loads these are 4 ohm resistive loads and we have the amp bridged at 4 ohms so that puts a 2 ohm load per channel to the amp. So we're loading it down. Let's try out the sub channel, see what we get. So everything I just explained is for a later part of the video. Actually, the first part here, we're gonna test the four channel mode and also have the sub connected to a four ohm resistive load. So here in the beginning, again, this will be the front channels and we're gonna have them bridge down to two channels. So we're gonna try eight ohms and four ohms bridge and I'll explain that once we show the test. So first off, eight ohm certified Rated 55 watts by 4 or 110 by 2 if you go to the 8 ohm mode. And you see 123, 122, so it did its rated power. All right, now we're going to do the 4 ohms bridge test, which equals 2 ohm stereo, where it's rated 85 by 4. Here we're looking at 170 by 2 to meet rated. The other thing to note is we're running all channels at 40 hertz, so we're really loading down the power supply. 177 and 166, so right at the rated power. Certified at 1% THD. Uncertified, again, all channels loaded at 40 hertz. We got 181, 173, so it did its rated power. Dynamically at 40 hertz. You can see we got over the rating again, 187, 180. 189, 180, went up just a little bit. Now, just as a comparison, we did the bridge mode at one kilohertz, which obviously the subchannel is not gonna be loaded when we're doing one kilohertz because it's not gonna use that frequency, but 209 and 198. So very nice. Now let's move on to the sub channel. And again, the front and rear channels are bridged at four ohms, so they're loaded down to two ohms per channel. Four ohms, the sub channel is rated 300 watts. Easily get that, 424 at 14.32. Uncertified mode takes us up to the clipping point. Again, the tests are run at 40 hertz. 427, 14.33. Dynamic burst sends a dynamic pulse into the amp. It's a little bit less here because remember all channels are being run at 40 hertz 397 
Now we'll try the sub channel at two ohms where it's rated 450 watts at 14.4 volts. Again, we have the front channels loaded as well here at 40 hertz. We have the crossover set to full range, so it's getting that. Look at this, 523 at 14.2, so easily did its rated power plus some, up to 1% THD. Next up, we'll try it to clipping, uncertified mode, 545 at 14.05, very nice. Dynamic burst, here we go, look at this. Right at 600 watts and it jumped over, 628 at 14.38. Ooh, 631, got a little bit more. What you guys say about that? Yeah, boy. All right, now let's take the temperature of the amp using this infrared thermometer. And let's check down near where the MOSFETs are, or the outputs. You can see 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So she got kind of warm. Now we'll look at the results. We already just went over. There's some additional results here. I didn't show all the tests. But you can see the amp pretty much did its rated power or a little bit more at all ohm loads. So that's all we can ask for. Very nice overall, Scar. For a budget amp, you can't complain here. Now we'll move on to the what's inside part, of course. This is a car audio amplifier. It's going to have amp guts and chicken butts. So let's flip it over. Take the six screws out of the bottom, and then you'll be graced with all different kind of colors of transformers and capacitors and resistors and all kind of good stuff. Yeah, there you go. Lots of electronics. So we had Sam Bernard from Bear Vids talk about the SCAR 500 watt mono block before. This one is very similar. So I used the clip from a previous video here. Take it over, Sam. Tell us about the amp. The output section here, we're going to throw into category generic class D7 as per Perry Babin's amplifier repair guide, if you've ever seen that. This exact output circuit dates way back to at least the early 2000s and has been used in budget line amps such as Hyphonics, Lanzar Vibe, Autotech, and is based on an early discrete class D self oscillating architecture. There's actually a design flaw in these driver boards caused by an oversight when remodeling for surface mount components in that a couple of transistors here run extremely hot and cause premature failure of the amp. This could have been corrected by simply using beefier transistors here or by applying a heatsink to the whole thing, which is something that you should definitely consider if you plan on running these for a couple of years or more, especially in hot climates. So as you may have already guessed, SCAR does not design their own bespoke amplifier circuits and instead just copy pastes ancient layouts and put into a small but well assembled form factor. Yeah, despite the old cheap design, it does have a fairly decent build quality with inductor and transformer seated better than many that I've seen. Uh, although the driver board could do with some epoxy along the base, if you catch the right harmonic that's going to vibrate back and forth and eventually snap the legs, um, especially if it's mounted to a box. Thanks again to Sam from Bear Vids for that explanation of the driver board and some other things about the SCAR amp. Now let's talk about the good stuff. Power output, it met its rated power. It includes a base remote. Pretty small for the size and the value. You definitely cannot beat it at the current price getting a five channel amp to run your entire system. Things that could be better, speaker outputs, not on a harness. The base remote connector could be a little bit better. Could have voltage and clipping and other things like that. Input options that could let you switch between two, four, and five channel of inputs, give you more flexibility, and does not have a subsonic filter. That will be a nice addition to have as well. I did some listening tests on this amplifier in my lab. Full channel mode, you know, running uh, satellites for the front, subwoofer for the sub channel. It actually sounded pretty good. Fortunately, everything I listened to was copyrighted, so I can't play it back for here for you guys. But I was decently impressed with the sound quality. So just wanted to thank you guys again for supporting me. Also, extra thanks to Sam, Brad, Jesus, Stuart, and Travis. This is Big D. Until next time, know where I'm at. I'm out of here. All right, Scar Audio 5 channel. We're going to try the sub channel 1.33 ohms certified. It's not rated less than 2 ohms, but we're going to try it anyway. So let's see what we get. 40 hertz on the sub channel. All channels are loaded. All right, 548 at 14.13. All right, SCAR Audio 5 channel. The sub channel on this amp is rated down to two ohms. It's not rated anything lower. We're gonna try 1.33 dynamic. 
see if it goes into protect or just see what happens. Let's try out the 40 hertz dynamic track. Seven hundred ninety six watts, one point three three ohms. Wow.